The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one furlong to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. A very pleasant good morning racing fans and welcome here to Parks Racing for this week's edition of Let's Go Racing. On the program today we had some three-year-olds that were hopefully on the Kentucky Derby Trail. We'll take a look at the grade three sham stakes from Santa Anita. We'll also down, go down to Gulfstream Park for the Mucho Macho Man. Our local feature, Pennsylvania Breads at five and a half furlongs in the slop in a second level allowance condition. We'll see who enjoyed the off going. We'll also talk about sports wagering, which is now available here in Pennsylvania. Eclipse voting and much more over the next 30 minutes here on Let's Go Racing. Hi, everybody. Keith Jones down on the beautiful first floor here at Parks Racing and my good friend Dick Girardi and Dick Lent. We're going to pick, on some, pick up on something yep. that we started last week with your Eclipse votes. And uh, Dick, one of the categories that we don't often talk about mm -hmm. is the winning photograph and winning photographer. And it's kind of local this year. It's local by the great Barbara Livingston of DRF. And she had this awesome picture of the finish of the gallant Bob yes. on Pennsylvania Derby right. Day with the Savage, yes. <laughs> where the, the second place horse tried to bite. Yes. It didn't try to bite. It did. Bit yes. forensic <laughs> fire right as they were coming to the finish line. And Barbara's, of course, a legendary photographer. And she got the shot. She just, I mean, she's the best. Yep. She got this incredible shot that won the Eclipse Award for Best Photographer. Right place at the right time. A great photo. It's her fourth Eclipse Award. Yeah. So our congratulations to Barbara. Absolutely. And uh, Dick, some of the other things we didn't get to talk about uh, last week. How about Monomoy Girl? Monomoy Girl is a finalist for Horse of the Year. Uh, she obviously won every race she ran all year except technically yeah. the cotillion <laughs> even though she finished first she got disqualified but she's a finalist along with obviously justify and accelerate right. we know all the finalists now they'll announce the winners here coming up shortly she's not going to win horse of the year but obviously right. she's going to win three-year-old philly champ dick one of the other tough choices uh, along with horse of the year yep. was trainer of the year yeah. you got to juggle either bob baffert or chad brown what'd you do yeah it really was difficult i mean if you think about it chad had just an incredible year from beginning to end he won all the grade ones all these different divisions but Baffert won the, the triple, triple crown, crown. again. Yep. I think it's not unlike the Accelerate Justify folk. Where are you going? Well, I went with Justify and I went with Baffert because I don't care how easy he makes it look, right. it's really hard yep. to win the Triple Crown. Dick, any surprises on your ballot this year? Yeah, not really. I, I will say this. I voted for our good buddy Joe Bessaker on the on the owner's list because he was, I think, fifth in the country wow. in, in total number of wins. And, of course, he runs here at Parks. I didn't vote him first. I voted for Aronis Racing, which owns Accelerate. I right. thought they had an amazing year. How about the Ortiz brothers exacta <laughs> in the jockeys but yeah not a lot of surprises uh, we talked last week Maximus Mischief I voted him second Jay Walk obviously I voted first for two-year-old Philly in one of the more amazing years in the history of parks yeah. there's going to be at least one Eclipse Award right. winner coming out of here and, and if Jay Walk doesn't win something is wrong well that's great stuff Dick uh, well lots to get to over the next uh, I guess 25 minutes yep. here on the show and Dick let's start with our local race of the week it came from a very sloppy Saturday afternoon five and a half furlongs Pennsylvania breads looking for a second level allowance condition here. The favorite is number eight, Midnight Charlie. Seven of five for trader Eddie Coletti with Michael Sanchez on board. Now, just turned four. Right. Uh, didn't start his three-year-old season until September, but in his four starts, he fired every single time. He did. He's won close to uh, over $80,000 in those starts and is favored against a field of really accomplished older horses, horses that have run a lot yep. more than Midnight Charlie, but boy, Eddie had a great 2018 chance to get off to a good start here this year. Second choice, number two, Gert Boys is five to two for trader Marcus Saletta was a $20,000 claim two starts back and paid immediately immediate dividends off that claim. Yeah, but coming right back to win a state bread for 30, and there's a lot of money involved in those kind of races. Yeah, that was seven eights. He's going five and a half. Let's see if he has enough time to catch up. Let's take a look at our local race of the week. Dancing Bull comes to the quarter pole and is powered away to a four length lead. Here comes Midnight Charlie putting in a run now. Late breaking news is third down toward the inside. The field comes off the turn. Dancing Bull's lead begins to dwindle. Midnight Charlie is closing in on the outside. Far outside, it's late breaking news. Gert Boy's getting involved with a bit on the far outside. Midnight Charlie strikes the front, but late breaking news is closing in on the far outside. Gert Boy's 
Midnight Charlie on the inside. Late breaking news between horses. Gert Boyd's here at the wire. Well, a terrific finish in our local race of the week. Midnight Charlie gets it done for Eddie Coletti. at 7 to 5. Pays $4.80 to win. You get a 13 to 1 shot for the exact. A late breaking news ran big for Stacy Batches for second. Gert Boyd's was third. Midnight Charlie, an uptown Charlie Brown, and just uh, another one that he turns out and another good one. Yeah, they got a really good sire here in Pennsylvania, and of course this is a Pennsylvania bred, and that, that whole outfit has just figured this out. Yep. And of course Eddie's having a great, great run. This is not a, this is a horse that has not finished winning. And Dick, before we get to our first break, something that we've heard about here in Pennsylvania for a long time is finally a reality, and that's sports wagering over the casino. Right, it's been a reality in New Jersey for a couple of months now, and finally here in Pennsylvania. And look, maybe chance to bet on the Eagles yeah. plus eight or eight and a half whatever or it's nine be. or whatever the yep. number is going to be against the Saints tomorrow. You had a chance to talk with Senior Vice President Matt Cullen. About, I, yeah. I, did, I did and this is really going to be interesting to see how it plays yeah. out here. We got horses, we got casino, now we got sports gambling here at the parks. Well here's more from the casino. With Matt Cullen who's in charge of the new sports book here at the parks casino. Matt what are you hoping for as you get set to open here? We, I'll tell you what we expect, which is uh, several crazy days here um, and a lot of fun. We think, uh, given the fandom here in Philadelphia and um, you know just the way people that we we know people like to wager in this city, that we're going to have uh, we're going to have a lot of action here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, what do you think you'll have in here on Sunday in your first Sunday of NFL betting? Um, I would expect that Saturday and Sunday is going to be extremely busy here. Uh, we fully expect that. We're prepared for it. And Matt, this is your temporary sports book. We That's understand right. you're actually building one at another end of the building. What's that going to be like and when might that open? Well, this space is about 3,000 square feet. Um, and you can see it's a, it's a pretty nice temporary sports book, mm -hmm. um, certainly by Las Vegas standards. Um, but the, the new book is going to be state of the art. It's about, about three times this size with a huge TV screen that wraps around the room. Um, and we're really excited about that, but it's going to take some time to get that built. Well, it's time to head to our first break. We come back here on Let's Go Racing. You know who's going to make an appearance? I do. How about Bruce Casella? He's back. Yes. From well, behind the camera. Yeah, stay with us. We'll be right back after this. What does Chapman's seven locations and 10 car brands mean to you? It means a huge selection of quality pre-owned vehicles, all makes and models, many one owner low mileage certified with miles of factory warranty remaining, safety checked, meticulously detailed, and each come with a free Carfax report so you can buy with complete confidence at any Chapman Auto Store near you or shop online anytime at ChapmanPreOwned.com. If our emblem is not on your car or truck, you probably did pay too much. Welcome back everyone to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing and our feature segment this week features the great people that make up the game of horse racing here in Pennsylvania. And Dick, you and I have been around the sport for a long time yep. and we know that what the public sees in the afternoon right. is only a very small part of what goes on. Yeah, what actually happens out here is like from 4 in the morning to 10 in the morning when everybody's caring for the horses, getting them ready to go yep. train, uh, feeding them, doing all the little things that make this stuff happen. There are so many jobs involved oh, in getting Lord. those horses to the race track. And here's question. our friend Bruce Casella with some of the folks that make horse racing a reality here in Pennsylvania. The sport of horse racing touches many lives. Behind the scenes here at Parks, it's like a small town, each doing their job to support the thoroughbred. For many of these workers, this is their passion. Arriving at the barn, 4.30 a.m., seven days a week. Oh, this is their lifestyle. Uh, I work with the one hot walker I work with. She has been doing it her whole entire life. And even uh, our assistant, Jill, she has been born and raised into it. You take it out, you're taking out a whole family. You learn to fall in love with animals. You learn to fall in love with horses. Um, and if some of you are fortunate enough to have your dad or your mom take you around horses at the farm or better yet, the racetrack, and you get to witness all that, then it gets in your blood. And once it's in there, you're not getting it out. The unbeaten colt, Smarty Jones, is drawing away to win the Derby. Smarty Jones and Stewie Elliott going out to win. Smarty Jones goes out to win. You've won the Kentucky Derby, the Kentucky Oaks, some other big races around the country. You could probably go anywhere and train, but yet you stay here at Parks. Why? Well, since I came here in 1980, um, I was always treated well. I raised my family here. Both my boys grew up and went to school here. Um, 
and this has become my roots, and it's, it's comfortable for me. Most people couldn't do this job. It takes a special person to handle the demands of a thoroughbred racehorse, but for those who can, it's a rewarding way of life. When I came over here, I only came with one luggage, and now I got um, my wife, four kids, house, two cars. I got everything I pretty much wanted. It's great. I mean, we have uh, an awesome program. We have a pension plan here, thanks to everybody. We got health care. Purses are good. You don't have to move around year from year to year. You can stay put and uh, raise, be able to raise a family and be able to keep your home and not have to worry about leaving and having something happen. Racing horses at parks has meant the world to many of these workers. It has helped support generations of families. They attend area schools, shop at the mall, eat at the local restaurants. It's just plain good for the local economy. This business really supports everything we do. It starts with the owners and then me, and then, you know, it's a trickle-down effect. All the money that I have coming in usually goes right back into the horses, into the agriculture. Um, horses are more than just horses. Uh, they're feeding tons of families. It's supporting the whole PA agriculture. Wow. It means a lot to a lot of people, a lot of jobs, um, green space, the whole breeding program the owners that are putting all that money into just getting young horses to the races here. It provides so many jobs on so many levels, right down to your farrier, your, the guy who's selling hay, who's making hay out at his farm, a reason to keep the green space. And they're off at the Cotillion Stakes. If you want to see these amazing athletes run, come on out to Parks Racing. And remember what it takes to help these horses compete. Men and women working hard to make a living. These are your neighbors with a great message. It's fun to see them run. I think you said 4 o'clock. I wonder if <laughs> an alarm clock goes off awfully early when it's 4 o'clock. Yeah, especially in the wintertime yeah. when it's like 3 degrees <laughs> and uh, dark. Well, we tip our caps to all Absolutely. those people who make it happen. Let's get to our national coverage brought to you by Chapman Auto Group. Unless our emblem is on the back of your car or truck, you've probably paid too much. Three-year-olds. Three-year-olds. Three -year -olds. Three -year -olds. Yes. It's starting. Yep. Let's go out to Santa Anita for the Grade 3 Sham Stakes. They'll go a mile for a purse of $100,000. And Derby Hopeful out of the Bob Baffert Barn. Number 5 Coliseum gets bet down to 3-5. to five. A son of Tappet did one start under his belt. And after that victory, he has thrown three bullets bullets in the workout tab. And his first start couldn't have been much more impressive. One to two, loose in the lead, 91 buyer, overwhelming favorite here. Godolphin, I guess, finally figured out, look, we haven't been able to do it our way. <laughs> Let's do it their way and give a really good two-year-old to the man, Bob Baffert. Number six, gun metal grade, the second choice at seven to two for trader Jerry Hollendorfer picks up Mike Smith for the ride, and he does have some experience under his belt. He does. Uh, he just happened to win the Triple Crown this year with Justify, and gun metal gray ran an okay fifth in the Breeders' Cup right. Juvenile. He was beaten by a dozen, ran second a game winner in the American Pharaoh, and is co-owned by our good friends yes. at West Point Thoroughbreds, yes. Terry Finley. A son of that exchange rate of off for the grade three sham. Here's the call. Around the first turn and Savagery opens up early. He's in front by three. Much better is tugging hard in second. And down on the inside, it's Gray Magician joined by Sueno. Then Coliseum, moving up on the outside. He's under a tight hold as well. Three and a half lengths off the lead. Easy Shot is just inside of him. And Gunmetal Gray is comfortable at the back. It's Savagery heading to the half mile pole in the Sham Stakes with a two length lead. Much better is in second. Sueno, Gray Magician inside of him. Then Easy Shot and Coliseum will be caught wide, but Coliseum is only three and a half or so off the lead. He's still second to last. Gun Metal Gray has trailed throughout. Much better makes a move at the 3 8 pole, putting the pressure on Savagery as they start to sprint. It's much better taking the lead. Savagery is fully extended, not responding. Gray Magician, Sueno. Coliseum still has a lot of work to do. He's on the far outside. Gun Metal Gray is starting to roll, has eight to make up. Top of the stretch and much better is the leader. Gun Metal Gray with an eye-catching rally on the extreme outside. Sueno Coliseum still five off the lead. A 16th to run and it's much better clinging to a narrow lead. Sueno Gun Metal Gray flying on the outside and Gun Metal Gray, an eye-catching rally. 
never a good thing when you're three to five and you miss the break. Mm. Coliseum mm. almost gets eliminated here at the beginning. Dick Gunmetal Gray leg well behind early, but makes a big late run, sustains it down to the finish, wins by a length. Pays nine dollars and forty cents to win. Eighteen to one shot. Number one, Sweto was second. Number seven, much better, was third. Gunmetal Gray, a great three winner. Yeah, great three winner, but didn't run very fast. Keith only an eighty-two buyer. Okay. It's going to have to get a lot better, obviously, to be a factor for the Derby, and we would love to see Terry and those great West Point callers be a factor. Who can forget when Commanding Curve yeah. came rolling behind uh, uh, California Crone to be second back in 2014, but the story was really Coliseum. As you said, he just missed the break, didn't really run much, no. was on the back stretch, looked like he was making a move, and then he just had nothing. And They've had a little trouble. He's been a little headstrong in his works. They haven't been able to control him. Back to the drawing board for a horse with talent, right. whether he's going to be ready to compete with these kind of horses for this derby is a question. Well, Baffert's got plenty more than him. So, yes, uh, yes, he does. He does. <laughs> Let's get down to Gulfstream Park now for the Mucho Macho Man, a one-turn mile for $100,000 in deck, a horse that we have been waiting yes, to indeed. see. Number four, Code of Honor. Gets bet down to four to five for Trader Shug McGahee. Johnny Velasquez will be on board, and Dick, he came onto our radar screens in a big way. He did. He ran in the champagne against an inside track bias, came rolling after completely missing the break, ran a really good second to complexity, and he was going to be in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, was scratched the day of the race with an illness, and I was prepared to make a pretty big bet on him and game winner. Right. Uh, I always wonder what would have happened, and now we're going to see Code of Honor make his debut as a three-year-old. Second choice, number six, Migos, goes off at five to two for trainer Jimmy Jerkins and Dick. There were a lot of people that really liked the way he broke his maiden. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. It wasn't a great number, but just visually it looked like, hey, this might be a pretty good horse. Well, this is the time of the year when the three-year-olds can get their number to get better yep. and let's see what that, if that's what happens down at Gulf Street Park, the Mucho Macho Man. It's long shot Gladiator King in from Tampa and two and a half in front. Well defined, taking up some slack second, trophy chaser on the outside third. Carter and Ty is now fourth, moving to be fifth as Code of Honor, and now the trailer is Mijos. They start to slacken the tempo a bit through the opening quarter in 23 seconds flat. Five furlongs left to go. With the advantage, it's Gladiator King a length and a half. Now moving up on the outside, Mijos. That's going to send Johnny V into action on Code of Honor. So he's three wide on the favorite, four wide Mijos. Meanwhile, Well Defined wants off the fence, and Trophy Chaser wants to go on the attack. So a lot of movement mid-race. Meanwhile, Gaffleone sat chilly on Garter and Ty. He has him in a pocket toward the rail. All six in with a chance through a 45 and two half mile. They run past the 5 16ths with Trophy Chaser now taking a narrow lead. Well defined. Tries to hang with him second on the outside in Mijos. Code of Honor is going to have to do a bit better than that. Garter and Ties held up in traffic, and Gladiator King is last. And there's a quarter of a mile left to go. Trophy Chaser let go by Lionel Reyes and two and a half on top. From the outside, it's Mijos. From between horses, Garter and Ty. Then it's Code of Honor. Final eighth of a mile. Trophy Chaser trying to get home. Mijos going to try to nail him on the money. This is going to get Get close as Mijos starts to get some ground. Here's Mijos. Mijos is in time. Well, Dick, Code of Honor. We'll talk about him in just a second. Yep. But how about Mijos coming yep. on late to get up to win it by a net pay? $7.80 to win. Number three, Trophy Chaser second. Number one, Garter and Ty was third. Code of Honor is off the board. Dick, number six, Mijos just kept coming. Yeah, I thought he was okay in this race. Not great, but okay. A 90 buyer is going to have to improve, obviously, to get in the hunt. Right. Jose Ortiz, well, everybody's going to want him to ride their good three-year-olds. Boy, Code of Honor was just not very good. Well, that Coliseum, you could say, had an excuse. Yeah. I mean, he missed yeah. the break, and yeah. then it's tough. Yeah. I didn't see any excuse for Code of Honor. I didn't either. Maybe this illness has just lingered, and he just isn't the same horse that we watched as a two-year-old, but I know they, there's been a couple issues going on, but Man, I thought it was a really good weekend for yep. Maximus. Uh, Butch exactly. And, and Butch Reed crowd because Coliseum, Code of Honor, any top ten list, they would have been on it. Well, they're off it right now. Yeah. And uh, Maximus Mystic just moved up a little more in the, in the standings. <laughs> Works for me. Dick, let's get to our next break. We come back here on Let's Go Racing. We will meet our Turning for Home Horse of the Week. Much more as well. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Time to take a look at our Turning for Home Horse of the Week, of course, brought to you by the good folks at Turning for Home. Log on to their website at turningforhome.org. It's Tomo Chachi. How about that? I like the name. Tomo Chachi. Here's more with Danielle Montgomery. This week, we are proud to feature Tomo Chachi as our Turning for Home Horse of the Week. He is a strapping five-year-old bay gelding by Northview Stallions Jumpstart, who stands right here in Pennsylvania. From 27 starts, Chachi notched an impressive six wins, five seconds, and two-thirds, with earnings over $100,000. But both on the track and at our partner farms, he's really captured everyone's hearts with his great personality. Aimed to a pleasure-type home, we think you should take Chachi, because he is the sweetest lap dog you'll ever find in a horse. Chachi would make a welcome addition to any barn, for any level rider. He's available right now for adoption at Lighted Way Equestrian Program in Bridgeton, New Jersey. But you can find the link to his information at turningforhome.org. And of course, our thanks to Danielle and Turning for Home also sponsors our Jockey and Trader of the Week. And here at Parks, we have our own A-Rod. Angel Rodriguez, not Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod had a great <laughs> first week here. He had four wins on one program, cool. sprinkled in a couple others as well, so he jumps to the top of the jockey <laughs> standings with a great week. Angel Rodriguez, our Jockey of the Week, our Trainer of the Week, Lou Linder. Had another excellent week. Loose he finished Loose sixth last year in the, yeah, yeah, in the, in the, in the trainer's day. So Lou off to a good beginning. He is our trainer of the week. Dick, race recap. Let's get back out to Santa Anita for their big turf race of the weekend. It's the Great Two San Gabriel, nine furlongs for a purse of $200,000. Number seven next shares the eight to five favorite retainer Richard Baltus. Dick, he has run at some big odds in some big races and it put it himself very well. He won the Shadwell Turf Mile back in October at 23 to 1 at Keeneland. It was interesting, Keith. His form in California was not as good as the form when he came back east. Yeah. I actually thought he had a chance in the Breeders' Cup Mile. He didn't run good there, but he's running good here. The question is, is next shares going to get up? Yeah. The answer is, why would we be talking about yes. him? Unless he did. <laughs> the old $5.20 to win a Dick. He looks like they're going to point him to the Pegasus uh, Turf Cup down yes, on the sir. Big Dad Gulf Stream. That uh, turf race is having trouble attracting a lot of big names. Yeah, because it's early in the year for yeah. turf horses. A yeah. lot of these horses typically stay out of training at this point, and they right. go gear up for the big turf races in the summer and the fall. But I like the idea right. to amplify the Pegasus day, but yes, yeah. it can't, can't even give away yeah. anymore. What's going on? <laughs> Dick, I on racing. It's a grade three weekend down at Gulf Stream Park. The grade three Marshall was River. The grade three Tropical Turf. And out of the West Coast, the La Kenyatta. You love the La Kenyatta. Absolutely. You always have. We'll have that next week on Let's Go Racing. <laughs> Finish it up with news and notes. We'll be right back after this. Racehorses are pampered. Treated with care and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hard-working folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing. And breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania. It's a winner. What a night. Whether you're looking for some rock, or some roll. Whether this table calls your name or this one. If you're into big hits or big bites, Parks is Pennsylvania's number one casino with brand new tables and slots, two new restaurants, and Excite Center featuring the hottest acts. The best is better than ever. Parks Casino, what a night. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Pewter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the Mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. The final segment, News and Notes, brought to you by Pewter Stable. Log on to the website there, headed by Kate DeMassey at pewterstable.com. Become an owner today. Bruce Casella, Dick Girardi, and Keith Jones. And Dick, the sales, yes, there's sir. a lot of uh, big places for sales. One yep. of them is Lexington, Kentucky, oh, with yeah. Keeneland. And it's not unusual to see the big mares, mm -hmm. when they get finished their racing right. careers, to actually be sold. Yeah, and a really big one. Yeah. Now, five-year-old mare, Abel Tasman, who we saw here, 
in the cotillion in 2017, right. uh, really had a phenomenal career for Bob Baffert, and she just got sold for a little bit of cash. A little bit of cash. She's a six-time grade one winner. You had five million to put up, didn't you? I did. I was the underbidder. Yeah. I, I had to stop at 4.99. I yeah. just couldn't keep up. <laughs> here's more. Here's more from Keeneland. Hit number 288, consigned by TaylorMade sales agency agent Abel Tasman, five-year-old bay mare by Quality Road, out of Vargas Girl by Deputy Minister. Abel Tasman, a grade one winner in her stakes debut at two, and of course, more grade one wins came at three and again at four. A current Eclipse finalist, broodmare prospect, suitable for mating, Abel Tasman. Thank you, Kurt. What a pleasure. And we have a pretty good kickoff to start. You know, it's championship football night. We have three million to start. Four million, please. Three million, four million, three million, four, three million. Here in the morning, gonna vote and vote to do three million, four, three million, four, five, three million, five, three million, five, three million. Here in the morning, gonna vote and vote to do three million, five, five, at three million, five. Thanks, Bo. Three million, five, three million, five. What you got? Get five million, one, five million, one. Don't miss out. Five million, one, five million. Here you now one. Anybody else want to play? Five million in the back. Five million, one, five million, one, five million. Here in the morning, gonna vote and vote one. All three, then one, five million, five million, one, five million, and I have. She's still a pleasure. Five million one. Five million. Five million one. And we're going to the back with her. Five million dollars. Thank you. Best of luck. Well, I've been at the business over 30 years. I've never seen one of these auctions. I've been at the Keeneland yeah. sales. I was at the summer sales. I've been at Fasig Tipton, Saratoga. It's fascinating to watch as the money just starts showing up on the board and yeah. it keeps showing up. Dick, horse racing was front and center at the uh, the farm show, the Department of Agriculture for 2019. You love the farm show. I drive right by it on yes. my way to Penn State regularly in Harrisburg. Well, there's more on the farm show with our man Tony Black. The one thing that they're very interested in is the equipment that a jockey uses. I show them my saddle. Here's the saddle I show them. They can't even believe that I ride in something this small and that it goes on a 1,200 pound animal. Not only do I show them my saddle, I show them some of the safety equipment that we use. And they're so interested in seeing the safety equipment. Of course, every jock wears a helmet to protect his head and every jock wears goggles to protect their eyes, of course. And you know what else we do? We monitor what our horses are doing to make sure that they are in top physical shape and that everything they do during a race is above board and what they are taught to do. Run hard, run fast, and enjoy what they're doing. But racing is an interesting sport and people don't realize everything that goes into it till you stand there and you explain it to them. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to promote racing by explaining to people what racing and what a jockey's life is all about. Well, I don't think I can think of anybody better no. to do that than our guy Tony Black. The ultimate ambassador, the man whose goal is to win races yes. at 70. <laughs> that's and pretty, he might. pretty amazing. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up this week. Join us next week for another edition of Let's Go Racing.